Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and if you remember, October last year, I was sitting at this exact same counter reviewing the Fnatic CSL Elite wheelbase and the CSL P1 steering wheel. Now we have another contender in Fnatic's mid-range market in the form of the CSL Elite racing wheel for the PlayStation 4. Yep, Fnatic and PlayStation are finally playing nice again. Best of all, this is also compatible with the Xbox One, marking it the only wheel on the market compatible with the PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Now is this the triple threat that we have all been waiting for? Let's find out. So with a name and look that is oh so similar to the aforementioned CSL Elite Racing Wheel Base, what is exactly different with this? And looking on the outside, you can see that on the front of the wheelbase, they have decided to get rid of that god ugly digital camouflage look, and they went more for a fake brushed aluminum look. Now, the entire base on the outside is constructed out of plastic, but the front wheelbase does give it more of that premium feel. Speaking of premium feel, the wheel rim has a much more premium look and feel compared to the CSL steering wheel P1. The steering wheel P1's grip was all rubber, but this has some interesting blend of a leather and an Alcantara ultra suede grip. So where your hands are gonna be gripping at nine and three, you're gonna have the leather. Almost everywhere else, it's gonna be the Alcantara, except for the plastic top, which houses the LED display and the shift lights. I honestly, I would have liked to see an all leather or an all Alcantara. Seeing both on a wheel rim gives it a little bit of this Frankenstein rim look, but that's just my personal preference. Your mileage may vary. It's still a great rim. It's miles ahead of the steering wheel P1. So that is great. One other thing I want to mention is the paddle shifters. The paddle shifters have had a significant improvement over the steering wheel P1 where they are now using this rubber dome based shifting. And that gives it a much more tactile feedback, if you can hear. That's a much better shift sound and also a much better shifting sensation. This did remind me a bit more of those magnetic based paddle shifters, which give it more of a mechanical based feeling. So that is another great move forward on this steering wheel rim. One thing that also hasn't really changed too much from this wheel rim from the CSL steering wheel P1 is the quick release. I wasn't a fan of it in the CSL steering wheel P1 and I'm still not a big fan of it right now. However, there are some minor improvements and I will say it works a little bit better now. No longer are you gonna have to require my entire body weight to pull it but maybe just about a third of my body weight yank in to get this off. However, it is compatible with all of the Fnatic Club Sport wheel rims, which have that slip ring, which works a lot better in my opinion. Now I want to talk about the big ticket item, the PlayStation 4 compatibility. Now there was support baked into the Fnatic Club Sport wheel V2.0, but it was rather minimal and it didn't take advantage of all the PlayStation 4 features, also, it was somewhat retconned by Fnatic later on. However, you want to hold on to that tidbit because it's going to be kind of important. Fnatic's support for the PlayStation 4 is kind of interesting, especially compared to the Xbox One. For the Xbox One, you have the compatibility baked into the steering wheel rim. You have two rims that you can use with the Xbox One. You either have to use the CSL steering wheel P1 or the Universal Hub. With the PlayStation 4, the support is baked into the base. That means you can use any Fnatic CSL or CSW rim with the PlayStation 4. If you want to go full console blasphemy, you can use an Xbox One compatible rim with the PlayStation 4. Now isn't that fun? While support for all the different wheel rims is definitely great, it isn't really worth much if there aren't many titles to race on it and that's where things start to get a little rocky. The CSL Elite Racing Wheel handles PS4 support via two modes. 
there is the native PlayStation 4 mode indicated by a blue light, and then there's the Club Sport Wheel V2 compatibility mode, which is indicated by a purple light. The Club Sport Wheel V2 compatibility mode functions like a PS4 controller. However, you do not have control of the PS4 system menus and the PS4 home button does not work. Apart from that, the wheel works just fine. However, the native PS4 would be ideal. And that's where things get a little rough. At the time of this review, two titles support PS4 native mode, Dirt 4 and Assetto Corsa. And then five titles support PS4 mode through the CSW V2 compatibility mode. Project Cars, WRC5, F1 2015, The Crew, and Dirt Rally. Now the Club Sport Wheel V2 compatibility mode is not a deal breaker. However, some titles are lacking certain features that you would expect to have there. For example, Dirt Rally has no support for the Club Sport shifter at the time of this review, and that means you can't use the H-Pattern shifter with classic cars. Definitely a bit disappointing. And also, it's sort of perplexing. For example, WRC5 and F1 2015 are supported, but F1 2016 and WRC6 aren't supported. And I tried F1 2016 with the wheel, and it would steer, it would use the throttle and brake, but there was no force feedback whatsoever, so that was disappointing. Also, another fan favorite PS4 racing title, Drive Club, a noticeable omission, and that's sort of disappointing. I tried driving it, but no feedback whatsoever through the wheel. On the Xbox One side, this functions just fine and is compatible with almost all titles. Granted, you do need an Xbox One compatible rim, but you can get the CSL P1 steering wheel for about $89 in the United States. So that's a solid option if you want to have compatibility with both consoles for a price tag under $600. And there isn't really much to say beyond that. It's good with the Xbox One, somewhat limited compatibility with the PS4, especially considering that this is an officially licensed PS4 product. I would have hoped to have more compatibility, especially more compatibility than the Xbox side. And now let's talk about the wheel performance. And I will say it's pretty darn good. This is really similar to the CSL Elite steering wheel that I also tested and reviewed and really liked. I will admit that there are moments when I'm driving this where it is not as smooth and it is definitely loud. And it is almost jarring at times if you do not have headphones on and you're just relying on speakers. But I will say it isn't really a deal breaker. It just is possibly a little loud. One thing I also noticed when testing out this wheel is there's also a little bit of chatter, which is not just relating to the sound, but also the behavior of the wheel. It feels like the belts get a little bound up at times, and that could cause what I am calling chatter and could upset your driving in some ways. However, what kind of makes up for it is that some of the features from the Club Sport Wheel V2.5 have also made it into this wheelbase. For example, negative drift mode, which actually works pretty well in the Club Sport Wheel V2.5, has also made its way into the CSL Elite Racing Wheel. And like the Club Sport Wheel V2.5, I have this set to negative three, so it is a good compromise between smoothness and speed. The 1000 Hz USB refresh rate is also present in this wheel. I can't really speak for if it had a performance increase in itself, but I did notice this wheel incredibly fast and incredibly strong with the motor. Before we get to the pros and cons, I do want to mention one last thing. This wheelbase does not have the build quality of a Club Sport wheel. That's to be expected of a wheel that is $500 for base and rim combo. One thing I did notice because of that lower build quality is there is a little bit of play in the drive shaft. That means when you're a little bit hard on the wheel, you might notice a little more flex than normal. And I talked with Fnatic, they said it's like that because of the lower quality materials. Under driving conditions, 
I didn't really notice it. It felt smooth, it felt just fine in terms of build quality. I have no fear that this steering shaft would break or anything like that. It is sturdy, but you might notice a little flex or a little bit of wobble. It's definitely a bit disappointing, but it's not a deal breaker in any way. But with that being said, let's get to the pros and cons. So my first pro, it's pretty obvious, is it is compatible with the PlayStation 4. So we finally have a Fnatic wheel that will be able to likely drive in GT Sport, Assetto Corsa, Project Cars on the PlayStation. And the next pro is it's also Xbox compatible. Granted, that is with the Xbox One compatible rim, which is going to either be an extra $90 to extra $350, depending on what rim you're going to want. But it is nice to have a wheelbase that is compatible with both systems. Another pro I wanted to mention is that this wheelbase is compatible with the Fnatic accessories and that is including on the PlayStation 4. So you can use the Club Sport handbrake and Club Sport shifter on Dirt 4 and Project Cars. You can use the load cell based CSL Elite and the Club Sport pedals and you can use those well on the PlayStation 4. That is one area where Fnatic does trump Thrustmaster. My next pro is this is a better steering wheel than what we had with the steering wheel P1. I like the feel of this wheel. I did mention that I would have preferred to see a single material, but the wheel rim is definitely a solid step up from the CSL steering wheel P1. My next pro is this is a definite improvement on the looks. I did not like the look of the CSL Elite wheelbase. I didn't like that mix match of materials on the front. I didn't like that digital camouflage look. The fake brushed aluminum look on this is a solid improvement and I would say I would take this wheelbase in terms of looks over the CSL Elite wheelbase any day of the week. Another pro that I actually did not mention earlier is that this wheelbase has a dedicated handbrake cord. With the Club Sport wheel, you're going to have to have an adapter that combines the pedal and the Club Sport handbrake together, and then it would plug into the pedal port. With this, you don't have to have that. You just plug the handbrake directly into the wheelbase, and it works just as such. My next pro is that the ports are all sticking out instead of down, which is how the Club Sport wheel handles it. The Club Sport wheel has all of the ports for the pedals, the shifters, and the USB and power cords facing down, so it can be difficult to swap things out. And with the ports facing back on the wheelbase on the CSL Elite Racing wheel, this is definitely a solid improvement. It makes it easier to add and remove items, so that is another pro I like. And now let's get on to the cons. My first con is that the PlayStation 4 support as of right now is limited. With quite a few solid racing titles available for the PS4 that are not supported by this wheel, it's pretty disappointing. I would have loved to see support for F1 2016, Sebastian Loeb Rally Evo, WRC 6, and especially Drive Club. My next con is this is a pretty noisy wheel under load. When you are driving, you can really hear the force feedback and also you can hear the fan and it is pretty loud, especially compared to the quieter fan used on the Club Sport Wheel V2. Now my last con is the compromises in build quality. Now I totally understand where a wheelbase does need to cut corners, but feeling a little more play in the drive shaft than I would have liked that's kind of disappointing. It's not a deal breaker, don't get me wrong, but it is slightly irritating. One last minor con I want to mention, and this should be reversed soon, is that this wheel is not available in the United States yet. I talked with Fnatic and they said they're still working out some of the logistics of Sony Computer Entertainment of America to just get all the licensing and everything down, but that should be sooner rather than later and hopefully this will get into the hands of Americans soon. Now in closing, I also want to mention I'm going to be doing a few changes in the way I conduct my reviews. 
I am going to be doing away with my points-based system. And the reason for that is because sim racing is evolving so much that in general, what is seen as an 85 or 90 now would be maybe seen as lower two years from now. We're seeing titles being exponentially increased by the quarter. So with all this evolution happening in our hobby, I'm feeling that scoring hardware and software based on a points-based system is sort of doing it a disservice. So I'm gonna just break it down into this way. Do I recommend it? So do I recommend the Fnatic CSL Elite Racing Wheel? Yes, it's a great wheel. I have a lot of fun with it. And also the cross-platform compatibility is great. Granted, there are some early teething pains with the PS4 compatibility, but I was talking with Fnatic and they are saying that they are going to be adding compatibility for more titles as it goes on. And I will say that is going to really determine if this is going to be a long-term investment. If they support future PS4 titles, if they support Project Cars 2, if they support Gran Turismo Sport, if they support retroactive titles such as F1 2016, Drive Club, Sebastian Loeb Rally, that is what's going to make or break this wheel. But if you are looking for a wheel to play a Seto Corsa, Project Cars Dirt 4 on the PlayStation 4, this is a great option. So these were my thoughts on the Fnatic CSL Elite Racing Wheel for the PlayStation 4. What are your thoughts? Have you tested this wheel out? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and help keep us on track. Also, check out the Sim Racing Paddock forums where we have recently announced a partnership with Sim Racing System so you can help us decide what series and what cars and what tracks we're going to be racing in. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.